Good Monday morning. Oh, it's been a while since we've been live, hasn't it? I hope everyone has had an awesome weekend. And if you're coming off of spring break, I'm so sorry that you're back to real life reality, but welcome back. Um, and then get excited for those of you. I feel like some are this week on spring break and then coming up in the next couple. So good morning, Emily. So I hope that if you're about to go on vacation, enjoy and maybe take some of those vacation videos with you that I talked about <laughs> and incorporate a little extra movement and a little extra time. Um, so one thing that I wanted to start with this morning is I have been sick for the last, since Saturday, um, call it a flu bug, I don't know what it was exactly, good morning Dan, but like knocked down, we're talking... I feel like I was achy and flu-like and the whole time on vacation taking naps, I had like a little back bedroom. I was asleep napping. My kids would come in and kiss me and leave and go play at the pool. It was kind of, it was great because I was with my mom, but kind of awful because here I am on vacation, completely sick. But you know what sick always does for me? It reminds me, first of all, I always feel, I hope I'm an empathetic person, but I feel like sickness brings on even more empathy. And I wanted to talk about this for a second before we get into our real topic because I think more than anything, it's so important to feel understood. And where I'm going with the empathy thing is that no energy, not body, not feeling right. You know how hard it is to stay motivated to just do normal things during the day? And then, and then I think about a me or somebody telling you you need to go work out, you need to go make sure the workout's happening, the healthy food is happening, the grocery shopping, and this is all on top of possibly a chronic condition that keeps you at a really low level of energy or a low level of pain or a high level of pain. Um, those things that we don't think about that some people are living with daily and then we're saying, hey, Go be the most fit you can be or go be the most healthy you can be. Good morning, Jan. Good morning, Taryn. Um, and so I'm bringing this up because I just, one, I want you, I want to say I'm so proud of you. I want to say that, man, if these are your feelings and every day you're still pushing because you care, because you want to feel better, that I know it's an uphill battle and hang in there because it will at some point get easier. I was actually um, just kind of having a similar conversation with a client last night and saying, I really, I am proud of you. You're pushing through a lot of stuff. And she goes, well, I kind of like my fingers and toes because her diabetes is her biggest why on making sure her, her goals happen. And, and man, that hit home again. I feel like we always talk about why, but making sure that your why is strong enough to back your goals to back why you're saying I'm getting out the door and making workouts happen or I'm making sure that my eating is good, um, the meal planning, all these things that take time and energy and if our why isn't big enough, it's just so easy to throw our hands up and go, today I don't care. We're going to have those days anyways. But I just again want to just say I'm so proud of you for keep trying and that I hope that this at this point, it's a Facebook page, you know, for me, and down the road, it's going to be a website, and I hope that it's a happy home that you can come to that makes you feel understood and that really helps keep pushing you forward on your journey. Um, so, hugs, and, and I hope that I'm coming out of my sickness, and I hope that uh, you're, you're feeling good as well. So, what I wanted to talk about today is um, organization. This topic always comes up at some point, not always necessarily in first talks or even first years of working with somebody, but at some point, I always feel like organization comes up. And there are books, as you saw, that I had posted um, as my little preview last night before this morning, but there are books, there are blogs, there are studies done on decluttering equaling weight loss, um, organization equaling weight loss. And so there really is science behind this, and it doesn't take but starting to do it before you realize why. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through the process a little bit. I'm not going to give you every single in and out, and I have honestly not read the book or a lot of these books. I just 
feel like these conversations come up a lot. And so maybe that'll be one of the next ones on my book list. But um, I don't know if you saw my post last night, but it had a brain and kind of these offshoots of how our brain can take clutter. And I'm going to start with this because I feel like it kind of helps guide the rest of our thought process on organization. And so, so one thing is clutter. Um, it makes us feel overwhelmed. And I know I've talked about this before, but how I've said I've literally stood in my kitchen and, and spun because each room needs organizing or cleaned or laundry or da 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 And so when we see all of that, we get that immediate feeling of overwhelmed. And, and so here's where we have to think about any of these emotions that are going to come with clutter, I would say 90% of us are emotional eaters to some extent. And that can be that stress, overwhelm type eating. It can be procrastination eating. It can be bored eating. It can be um, stressed eating. And so clutter can magnify some of that eating. And, and my example, just even with this, the overwhelm feeling is that, you know, I stand in my kitchen and spin and then versus tackle something, it's easier to walk up to the refrigerator and start <laughs> perusing through there and, and eating instead of tackling. So that's one example. So overwhelm feeling clutter can also feel like chaos. I already feel like a lot of us feel rushed, overwhelmed, have to be here, have to be there. Maybe you have kids and work and blah, blah, blah. And, and so if you're already living in a little bit of chaos due to time constrictions. This does not help to have clutter making us feel more chaotic. Oh, I like that. Taryn just said, I always used to clean before I could study for exams. And I 100% agree. Once your environment feels better, then you can like finally sit down, open up the book. I agree. And so I kind of think that exact same way of cleaning before starting like your kitchen project or meal prepping that... A lot of people feel that same way, that their kitchen has to be perfect before they start the meal prep. And it does help, um, but that could be one thing holding you back from meal prep too, is what your space looks like. So I'm going to keep talking about that. Um, clutter can feel like we have no time in our day. And again, that feeling of looking around and thinking, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. And... So now it's not only cleaning, it's not only meal prep, it's not only exercise, it's not only getting kids where they need to go. And man, doesn't that feeling make us want to just crumble and shut down? Um, clutter makes us have that I can't find it feeling. And this was one of the big things you read when you like read the bloggers is you're finally running out the door to make it to an exercise class and you can't find your keys or your exercise clothes are strewn and you can't find the right outfit or you can't find your tennis shoes. So things that should be easy, sometimes aren't because of our clutter. Um, feeling like we have no space. I hear a lot of people say this too. I think a lot of us do this. We feel like we need more gadgets or gasmos to help us organize when the reality is it's more of just getting the space that we currently have clean. So before you go out and buy more to help with the issue, it's more like no more buying. Let's just start to purge what and where our spaces are. And believe me, I am preaching to myself on this one. Anyone who has existed in my house and seen some closets that I haven't touched since I moved in, um, I always tell you to use me and I'm going to use you in this next week and maybe I'll extend it if everyone's liking it. But um, we're going to work together over the next week to pick a space to organize and I'll go into that more too. But And then lastly, clutter can really lead to frustration because we might just be frustrated that we can't get any one given component really flowing, and it might be because we've got some of that clutter barrier going on. Um, okay, so kind of taking this, we immediately think of environment and space that needs decluttered, but let's first talk about organize. So clutter, organization, I'm going to kind of use this word interchangeably, but organize your time first. I really feel like if we can look at a day and before the day or before the week starts and just have a decent idea of what needs to happen. Because once we know what needs to happen, then we can start to figure out where in the week that it might fit. This is actually an exercise I do with a lot of my clients is we, we write down like ultimate goals, but then sometimes we're plugging it on a calendar going, this is where it technically could happen. It's not put on the calendar to say it must happen. It's just because then at least if we see it, there's a better chance of it happening. And it's okay if it doesn't happen. 
But again, so kind of think through your week. You might be writing it on your phone calendar. You might be writing it on a real calendar, or you might just be jotting notes off on a scrap piece of paper for yourself. But kind of like ultimately, what do you want done? Where can you see it being done? So once we organize our time, then we can start to schedule things that are of high importance for us. So that means, man, if the workouts aren't happening, it's probably because you're not scheduling it into your week. You have to treat it like an appointment time because we're not going to skip out on a doctor's appointment, right? And your body deserves that movement time. And so we're going to take scheduling as an opportunity, whether that's with a personal trainer, that helps because now we're paying someone to go show up, but it doesn't have to be that. It can be scheduling with a friend. It can be scheduling just with yourself. I find that if I have it blocked on my calendar, that I'm likely to tell somebody else no um, because I am already looking at something that I have to do. So to all my women and men who are terrible about saying no, put it on your calendar. And that way, if somebody is asking something of you, you see something else of high importance so that you can say either no or you can say, hey, I can't at that time, but I still want to help. Maybe I can help at another time. Okay, so that's where scheduling is huge. Um, okay, what else? So scheduling the important stuff. Also, I've had uh, clients schedule grocery shopping. I know that sounds interesting, but... It, sometimes if you don't schedule the grocery shopping, it's not happening. It always gets pushed back, and then you end up finding yourself eating out more. Um, and then having backup plans for these schedules. If your schedule just totally falls apart because that's life, what's our backup plan? So I like this too, organizing a good evening routine, uh, making sure that a decent bedtime happens. If you find yourself always crawling in at almost midnight every night and going, how did that happen again? because you're kind of chaotic in your evening, getting homework done, getting back from practice, making dishes happen, blah, blah. Maybe we need to work on organization of your evening time. Um, and then talking about organization of your environment. Okay, so going back to everything we were talking about, about feeling overwhelmed, chaotic, our environment makes us feel this. And you're probably thinking kitchen, right? That what if my fridge is chaotic or unorganized, my cupboards, my my sink, my tabletops, I've got desk papers, I've got school papers. So yes, so kitchen I think is a huge tackle zone, but it doesn't have to be just kitchen. It could for some people be garage, it can be bedroom, it can be laundry room, it can be anywhere. And I'm telling you this because it's not the correlation between the clutter existing in your food areas or your exercise areas. I mean, yes, it can be, but it's not just that. It really is your whole environment and how it affects you mentally. Um, and so when you look at, and I'm going to take kitchen as an example. If you feel like your kitchen is stagnating you, if there is nothing motivating about your kitchen, this is going to be your first area I want you to tackle. And I don't want you to feel like it needs to be your whole kitchen it can be one little area. It can be start with your fridge. It could be start with your cupboard. Um, it can just be start with a little work area. If you feel like you are a papers person and the papers kind of stack up in your kitchen, where's another area we can start to, to push that off so we always have countertop space to do the meal prep. Um, and so I'm not going to dig too much into specific areas because I think as I'm talking about this, everybody probably has that one area. Um, and you might not physically have it. Some of my cleanest of clean, tidiest of tidy people, that's not their area. It's not the clutter of your space. It's more maybe the clutter of your time. And that's why I really did want to talk about timing too. Like if you're not seeing certain things happen because you're feeling overscheduled, um, then your organization is going to come more from a time and a scheduling standpoint versus the physical person who has the clutter going on within your living environment, that might be where you want to start to tackle your space. So right now, I want you to shut your eyeballs for a second and really think, where in my life could I work on organization? Um, pick one very small, manageable area. And my challenge for you is, we have all the way until, I'm going to say next Monday, I know that I'll see you on Friday, but 
next Monday. So you have a solid seven days to pick that one small area and tackle it and see if it really starts to build a ripple effect for you. Because typically once you get a little bit of that clutter gone, then you get to start to move on to, to me possibly meal prep or walking out the door and making a little fitness happen because another area of your life feels good. I really want you to experience what these ripple effects feel like because it starts to hone in on, wow, small changes can really make a huge difference. Um, but when we feel overwhelmed and when we feel chaos and when we feel panicky, it's hard to get to that spot. So you have to tackle one small little area and then we're gonna feel the ripple effect move in different areas of our life, okay? All right, so give me seven days. Um, if this doesn't feel like it pertains to you, I, I apologize, but I feel like to almost anyone I could think of, we all have one little area that we can work on. So take this seven days, pick your area. If it is an actual spatial thing and it's um, viewable, if you could take pictures and post them as the week goes on, I would love it. Even if you want to private message me with it, I could post out everybody's in like one felt swoop next Monday. Um, but I would love for you to join me on this little seven day challenge and let me know how you're doing. I'll keep you posted on how I'm doing. Lord knows I'm going to be working on this as well. And, and just going back to our beginning topic uh, again, I'm just, I'm really proud of everyone pushing through energy and pushing through pain and pushing through all of our barriers because we all have them and hang in there. Okay. So have a fabulous week. Thank you everyone for jumping on. Sorry if I missed saying good morning this morning. Big hugs, and we will chat soon. Okay, take care.